I'm back with another cooking tutorial. Today we're going to do a um, chicken stir fry. Now there's a lot of variations on this uh, recipe, but the staples that you're going to need are going to be garlic, ginger, onion, and some sort of celery. Bok, uh, this is a bok choy. This is an Asian celery, which would be preferable. But you can just use straight celery. But the garlic and the ginger are the two base ingredients that are going to give you that strong flavors that you like. What I've already done here, this is one chicken breast and I've cut it up and to that I've added a tablespoon of rice wine vinegar and a tablespoon of soy sauce and uh, a heaping teaspoon of cornstarch. And I'm just letting that coat and set, just do that ahead of time and let that chicken uh, soak into that juice. That It's like a marinade. But with the cornstarch too, it's also going to give a, a coating when I go ahead and fry it. I like to do all my prep work ahead of time. I like to get everything ready. I want to, uh, I'm going to do the garlic and the ginger and I'm going to put those in this bowl. That'll be the first thing that goes into the oil. Because that's going to give the oil a nice flavor. And then I'm going to put in my bok choy and this is this one uh, half a sweet onion. This is one of the larger sweet sweet white onion. I'm going to use that. I also just happen to have a couple of um, green onions in the fridge, so we're going to go ahead and throw them in. If I had broccoli, the broccoli would definitely be going, and I just don't happen to have any broccoli. Uh, other things, uh, there's all sorts. You could use any vegetable you want, really. Uh, you could use pea pods, anything you want. So the first thing we have to do is uh, peel it. I'm going to use all of this garlic. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cloves, because I really, really like garlic, but you don't have to use this many cloves. I mean, maybe like two or three might be, you know, more to your liking. And also, because I'm going to use this fresh ginger, I'm not going to use uh, as much ginger as garlic because the fresh ginger really has a strong, strong flavor. If you're going to use the dried kind, you might want to use probably, you know, a little bit more. But with the fresh, you don't have to. Okay, so let me set this aside. I'm going to start by peeling my garlic. And you have to peel out that uh, layer and get to the nice clean part underneath. So I'm just going to peel one on camera and then we'll cut back to it um, after I get them all peeled. So, you know, you get all that outer layer out and then this is what you're left with, a nice smooth piece of garlic and this is the part we're going to use. Um, next, I'm going to use this figure. Let's look at this. So I want to use less ginger than I do the garlic. So I'm just going to cut off like a small piece, maybe about like this. Normally I would just break it, but I think that's probably going to be enough uh, garlic to ginger ratio. And then you've also, the gar the ginger has this outer stuff you got to peel off too. You can use a potato peeler. We're going to start peeling this uh, fresh ginger. And uh, you can use like a potato peeler. I'm just going to use my good, my knife here. I like, this is a flat, and I, used to, I like, just like you peel a potato. I'm going to go ahead and take out that outer layer off, and it's so fragrant. Oh, it just smells so good uh, when you cut into it. So that's the difference between fresh garlic and the, the dried kind. You really don't smell the dried kind as much. This is just, it's also pretty strong. So I'm going to, I'm just going to cut that off. Let me take a look, uh, do that. This is what your peeled uh, ginger root looks like. This is fresh ginger root. I'm going to cut, take a break, and come back after I've got these all peeled, and we'll move on to the next step. Okay, be back in a minute. Okay, we're back, and I've got all my garlic uh, peeled, and the uh, fresh ginger root is peeled. I still think that this might be a little too much, but we're going to go ahead and see. Now, I like this little knife to do the peeling, but for the chopping, I want to use my bigger knife. So I'm gonna, I don't want it shredded. I want it chopped into little tiny chunks. So I'm going to go through and do that. And I'm just uh, cutting this down into very small pieces. Like little tiny, uh, what would be the size of this comparison to? Like a, you know, not much bigger than a cooked rice kernel. You know, I want them to be right in that range. I want little tiny pieces, but I like them to be little tiny chunks. I don't want them shredded because if you shred it, I went ahead and did try to shred it some. It just sort of is just a big mush and I want it to be not mushy, a little bit, um, 
a little bit like little squares, little neat little squares. I like I like my ginger cut up too. I'm gonna move this out of the way. I'm even gonna give it more of a cut here. Okay, so I'm gonna cut up a few more pieces. I may not use all of this because we don't want our garlic to uh, ginger ratio to be correct. So, um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just keep turning this and cutting off uh, little tiny pieces of it. And yeah, I, th I think I will go ahead and use it all. I'm gonna go ahead and use it all. Or there, that much. Okay, I've got a little bowl set aside over here that I'm going to put my uh, fresh garlic and fresh ginger in. That way when we go to stir fry, I'm going to get everything done ahead of time. I'm going to get all my chopping done ahead of time. So then we go over to the stir fry, everything's ready to go. And right in the hot oil it will go and we can fry it up really quickly. Move that for a second. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just, uh, I got a little bowl here to put these in. That much ginger, it's so strong. The ginger is so much stronger than the uh, thing. I'm gonna come back and show you once I've got this all cut up. And I wanna show you some things about the bok choy also. So I'll be back in a minute. Okay, we're back over here doing our prep work and I've got my garlic finely minced. I've got this much garlic and this much fresh ginger. So much more garlic because the fresh ginger, I know you think garlic is a strong flavor and it is. But the fresh ginger is really a strong flavor. So if you use the dry ginger, you may want to use a little bit more because the fresh ginger just really has a very strong flavor. Okay, so now with our bok choy, this has a this wasn't the best um, bok choy there was, but I went ahead and got it anyway. It's got some stuff on the anything like this, this brown stuff, get rid of that. I mean, I, I ran it under water and did try to kind of uh, wash it off. It didn't come off quickly, so it means it's yuck get rid of it um what i do with the bok choy this has a lot of greens on it this is my a fresh stock i just bought so i'm going to cut i'm going to use all the greens from this because what i want in the final stir fry is i want some parts crunchy and some parts um leafy and you do want to get some leafy greens the leafy greens tend to die off quickly though i mean they tend to start spoiling quickly if you keep them in the refrigerator so I'm going to cut off all the greens today and use them today and then whatever's left over just this stocky crunchy part when well, next time I make a stir fry I'll just use some spinach just use some spinach for my leafy green and also this time too I'm going to be putting in uh, some bean sprouts so you don't have to put in bean sprouts you don't have to put in anything you don't want but again I don't want it all soft I, and I want a, a nice uh, combination I want a nice combination of some crunchy and some soft so today since I have all these greens from the bok choy I am NOT going to add any um, spinach but I'm going to try to get all these greens off of all of them and I'm going to just do these first few and show you I'm going to set these stalks aside we are going to use these stalks though because they're they're awesome the bok choy stalks they're so good they're sweet I like to cut them up and put them in, a, in just a regular uh, salad, you know, a regular lettuce, you know, a green salad. I like to throw in some of that bok choy. Um, well, here, let's just do these. So I just cut, I'm going to cut them all off, uh, but I'm just going to take these and then I'm just going to kind of bunch them together and then I'm just going to take my knife and start chopping at it. And these, of course, are going to be one of the last things you add. You're going to add your chunky, uh, crunchy vegetables first. And then you're going to add these at the, just to, at the end to just kind of wilt them. So this is how I just, that's it. Just chop them up like that. And I'm going to put these in a bowl and continue chopping these and I'll be back in a minute. Okay, and I'm back and I've got all my greens uh, cut up. And this is what you're going to end up with. And you can even pull some of these off. And again, you can use this in cellar. This will keep long enough, you know, for a couple of weeks even, where you can do another batch of stir fry. And then again, if you're going to do that, then you should probably just add some kind of greens in at that point. I would put, uh, I use spinach. I have a bag of frozen spinach in my uh, freezer at all times. I use it for all sorts of things. And I just uh, grab a handful of the frozen spinach out and um, throw it in the stir fry for the leafy greens at the end. So I used four stalks. Um, these are what they look like after, well, these are cut in half, so there's eight pieces here actually. 
Um, so this is with this piece cut off and the greens cut off. So now I'm going to go ahead, I cut them in half, and I'm just going to go, I like a nice chunky slice, not too fine on these, like some nice good sized, uh, maybe one inch or so square chunks. So there. I'm just going to set, put these in my colander over here uh, because these are going to be after the the first thing that's going to go in is the garlic and ginger, and then after that is going to be these harder vegetables, which includes the bok choy stalks and uh, half a sweet onion. So I'm going to go ahead and get this stuff off of the onion, the uh, peel the onion. I'm also going to cut these onions at a similar thing. I don't want these like finely minced or anything. I want some nice big pieces. These sweet onions are terrific anyway. They're just uh, so tasty, so good. Let me get that core thing out of there. Oh, here, now it's time to switch to the big knife. There, there's a piece of that core again, almost like a cabbage. Right, I'm going to cut this. So now I've got, uh, here's this a little piece too that has to come off. And here get rid of that. There we go. So I'm just going to kind of put this in, the, in these types of cuts like that and maybe a half. Yeah, so the pieces are similar size to my bok choy. Here's my bok choy, here's my onion. So I want them like similar, you know, one inch or so, maybe a little bigger on the onion. It kind of depends on the onion side. I usually like do that, like here's, this is whatever, like a eighth or a fourth of that. And then just, bam, almost like an orange. You know how you peel an orange apart? Kind of the same thing. So then I'm going to break these up. And they're going to be similar size to my, um, to my bok choy chunks. I'm going to put these all in the colander so when it comes time to stir fry, nice and easy. Um, I just happen to have some green onions in the fridge, so I'm going to throw them in. It's not, we already have the sweet onions, so it's not really even necessary. But there is a different taste, absolutely, between the... Uh, the green onion and the sweet onion. Um, as the green onion is much milder, my eyes are already starting to water from those other that sweet onion, and it gives a little bit of more of, of a color. Okay, so these are all my chopped vegetables that I'm going to use. I've got my one chicken breast. It's been marinating in one tablespoon of rice wine vinegar, one tablespoon of soy sauce. I've got I think um, I don't know how many it was six seven cloves of garlic and uh, it's like a three to one ratio between the fresh garlic and fresh ginger. I've got my greens from my bok choy. I've got my stalks from my bok choy and uh, half of one large sweet onion and some green onion. And I've got some bean sprouts and some other things. We're gonna move over to the stove and get ready to go ahead and start making the, the actual stir fry. Okay, I'll be back in a minute. Okay, I'm back over here by the stove. Um, Got all my ingredients all chopped up, all ready to go. Did my prep work, so now it should go really quickly. Normally I would use like a canola or vegetable oil, but I'm gonna try this uh, safflower oil. Oil. This is something new that I've uh, heard that's got some health benefits, so we're gonna go ahead and give it a try. I tasted it on my finger and it doesn't have any kind of a strong flavor, like you know how olive oil kind of has like a strong flavor. So I've just put some, enough to do the bottom of the pan. And I'm going to go ahead and put that on a high heat. And I'm going to give that a second. And while that's getting hot, I should have actually had that hot already. I'm going to make over here uh, my roux. That's going to go on very, the very last thing. So I'm going to go ahead and add some chicken broth. Um, I'm going to, let me see how much I have in here when I'm done. Probably about that much. So what is that? It is about, it's less than one cup. Uh, it's, it's somewhere around three-fourths of a cup of chicken broth. And to that, I'm going to add uh, some cornstarch, which I need to get a spoon for. I don't have my spoon ready. Cornstarch is often used in um, Asian cooking. And I, I use it a lot, too, to thicken gravies and so on. So I'm on, this is just a regular, this kind of tablespoon. Um, I'll go ahead and throw that in. And I think that's about right. So this is like a serving spoonful, which I think translates roughly to one tablespoon. Um, I'm going to take my fork that I had for my chicken. This fork just seems to get in there better and really break up those uh, cornstarch uh, little balls and so, such. So 
this is going to go in last and of course before we end up putting it in later we're going to give it another stir but now i've got it all broke down to a nice consistency it will start settling and the cornstarch will start settling on the bottom so before you add it in later you're going to have to um, give it up another stir but i'm just going to go ahead and let that sit now of the first thing to go into the stir fry oh i do need a uh, some sort of a uh, here we'll use this spoon a spoon this is my garlic finely minced garlic and finely minced fresh ginger. So I'm going to put that in first. I'm going to save this bowl too because I'm going to pull it out again or the majority of it out or I might move it aside but I'm just going to save this bowl just in case. So I'm going to get that going. I got it on a nice high heat. Get that oil and not only is it going to you know cook the garlic and ginger it's going to give that oil such a great flavor. So that'll be the thing later. The oil gets on all the vegetables and on the, all the meat, and it gives it such an awesome flavor. Another thing I want to get going is my rice. So I'm going to use, instead of water, I'm just going to use chicken broth. Um, I'm not measuring it. I don't know how much, but you're going to want to follow directions on the box anyway as far as your liquid uh, measurements. I think I maybe put in about maybe a half cup. I'm going to put that on the uh, stove, and I'm going to turn it on a high heat. And then I always use brown rice, and especially in stir fry, I'm going to use this minute made, uh, minute instant whole grain brown rice. It cooks faster, it's fine, um, heart healthy, and all that. A lot of people don't like um, brown rice. One of my good friends, oh, I can't stand brown rice, I can't switch to it. So I made some of this, I made her this dish actually, and I took it to her. And oh, she's raving. Oh, it's so delicious. It was so good. It was so good. I told her afterwards it had brown rice in it. You would never know because there's all these different flavors. And again, when you're cooking, you don't want one flavor to be the overbearing flavor. That's why you use more garlic than ginger because you don't want it to just taste like all like ginger. So these things are getting pretty close to being fried up. Um, Another thing about this dish is it does, it is excellent warmed up. This is another one of those dishes that I prefer to have later on after it's been, um, you know, set for a while because that gives, again, all those flavors get a chance to soak together and give a really good taste. Okay, so I'm going to, well, these need a few more minutes. Okay, we're almost there. It's going to cook some more later as well, too. So how do we get that out of there? The majority. I'm going to push it all to the top of the pan and let the oil kind of drain out. And sometimes you can just kind of leave it at the top of the pan. Ooh, a little bit got on the chicken, no, no big deal. And uh, I'm going to try to get most of that out and back into my bowl. Here, let's switch these around or move this chicken out of the way or something. I'll turn this heat down for a minute. Okay, so I want to get a lot of this out as much as I possibly can. I need my... Uh, my bowl that I was going to put them in over here. There we go. So I'm just going to kind of get these all. It's kind of tedious, but it's better because you don't want them to get burned. They're cooked fine, and then they're going to go back right in. They're going to go back in, and they've kind of done their job too in flavoring the oil because then you want that garlic and ginger flavor to be on all the oil. So I'm going to, you don't have to get every single speck of it out. I try to get the majority out though. But if you do leave them in, they, you might end up with some burnt little chunks. So you don't want that either. So um, I don't know how long I cooked that for. I didn't time it. But just till they get to be just a little bit, just starting to get hard. And just starting to get a little bit of that color on them. Not burned or anything. So I'm going to return that oil to the heat. And now the next thing is we're going to put in there our chicken. And it, with the chicken, too, you don't want a lot of that. If there's excess liquid, do that same kind of thing. Push it to one side and let the liquid roll down to the other side. Okay, I'm going to grab a, just grab a spoonful and right in the pan, right in that oil. Turn that oil up. Okay. And also my chicken broth and my rice is boiling, too. <laughs> so I've got to get to that. This should be sizzling, so I'm going to crank that heat. Oh, it's starting to sizzle. But you should really hear that sizzle. Okay, so there's still some of that stuff in there, that stir fry stuff. Uh, but in the meantime, I've got to turn this. Uh, this is boiling away. That chicken broth was at a high boil, and I'm going to go ahead and throw in some brown rice. Now, if you were, if you're not sure how much to use, read the directions on the box. I just kind of eyeball it. Okay. 
that much looks good to me. Uh, where's my that fork thing? And then I'm going to give it a mix around. And I'm just going to set it aside. And then that chicken broth is going to get nice and absorbed into my, um, my brown rice and give it a really good flavor. You can cook with, uh, do it with water, which is probably what the directions would say too. Um, you could definitely do this with no meat. Instead of chicken, you, know, you would use rice, uh, water with the rice. And instead of chicken, you could use some tofu, um, more vegetables. And then, of course, you wouldn't use chicken broth for your roux. You might want to use like a vegetable broth for your roux. Okay. Okay, and I'm back, and this chicken is definitely ready. Whew. I think I might have a little bit of too much oil. I might end up getting rid of some of this oil. But this is what it should look like. Nice and, you know, it's not pink anymore. It's got a nice uh, golden brown. And the same thing, I don't want to take too much of the oil with me. I just want to get the meat out, and I'm going to put it aside for now. And, uh, and I'm going to actually put it right back in that bowl that I cooked it in before. Drain off as much of that oil as I can. I probably should have used a slotted spoon for this. I think I have uh, too much oil, and before we go to our vegetables, I'm going to and actually get rid of some of this oil. I got a little carried away. So you want to just not have it like a deep puddle like that. You want to just have it to be um, maybe a coating on the bottom of the pan. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and throw this in my dog's dish, cause, and they will be very happy to have it. Okay. Let me just do that. It's just going to take a second. Okay. I'm back and I've got, now I've just got like a nice coating and there's some of that good uh, bits of meat from the chicken and, the, and that in there. Now, the first thing I'm going to go, I took my chicken out. The first thing I want to put back in is the hard vegetables, which in this case was the sweet onion and the bok choy stalks. So get that in there and get a nice coating on that. I mean, I may have taken too much oil out, but look how oily this chicken is. So a lot of that's going to go back in, and it'll give it a little bit more oil. You want enough oil in there to kind of coat the uh, vegetables, give a nice coating. Let's put that in there. Um, okay, so that's going to, we're going to give these a nice saute. Um, you know, and then I've got my roux, which will go in last. I wanted to talk about that roux. Where Asian cooking, you may use cornstarch. Same as like a European cooking, you would use flour. But I think I'm switching over. I've been switching over more and more to just cornstarch on everything. I think it's got a better flavor. So this is like a big chunk of that onion, so I want to kind of break it apart. There we go. I don't want those layers. I want them broke up. I should have done that ahead of time. I should have done that before I started frying them. So I'm going to get these, because these have to cook longer because they're hard. We want them. I still want them. Again, this is up to your discretion of how you how you like it. I still want them with a little bit of crunch. You know, I don't want them totally mushy, but also I don't want them hard, hard. I want to get a nice coating on that, and I'm just keep stirring them around and breaking them up as I'm, as I'm cooking it. Okay. That's going to take a few more minutes. Um, the other ingredients that I'm going to put in is these beans. I got a, one can of bean sprouts. You could, I didn't have any water chestnuts. I just happened to have that in the cupboard. Um, the other thing I bought for this dish is the bok choy. Everything else I happen to, I have around, you know, I just have it. Um, so I'm going to add one can of bean sprouts. Also, again, if I didn't have bean sprouts, I might put in uh, spinach as well as the uh, bok choy greens. So you have a nice, you know, distribute, you have some crunchy, some, uh, you know, greeny, wilty greens. It's up to you too, and I, I always, if I have broccoli, I always put broccoli in this because broccoli is another vegetable that goes awesome uh, with this dish. Okay, so I'm just moving these around and keeping them. I want to get a nice glaze of that oil on there with the, uh, and the oil has such a great uh, flavor of the um, garlic and uh, garlic and ginger, fresh garlic and ginger. It's not really that oily enough, but that's because I have so much oil in this thing. I don't want to. I don't want to add any because when I add the meat back, then of course we're going to have a problem. We don't want it to be really greasy. Okay, almost there. Another minute or so. Um, I think what I can put in right now, though, is the. Um, I'm going to go ahead and throw in these green onions. And again, 
I just happen to have them around. So in they go. There's no set thing as to what you can put in there as far as vegetables. Again, as long as you have your base. And that's another thing. In European stews and cooking and you know soups, your base is an onion, usually onion, carrot, and celery. And you could definitely use carrots in here too. I just don't happen to have any. But here it's like an onion and celery base. That onion and celery or onion and bok choy. The garlic and ginger, which I'm also going to go ahead and throw back in there now. And those are the main ingredients that are going to give it that good taste that you want. The other vegetables, you can just do whatever you want. Okay, so this is getting coming right along. Last thing I'm going to put in, or not the last thing, but the next thing that I'm going to put in is my bok choy greens. Okay, so we're going to just stir these around so they get coated and kind of wilted. And I'm also going to put my... Uh, Normally I wouldn't put this back in until last, but it's got so much oil and we're lacking. We need a little bit of that oil on it. Okay, there we go. Let's get that back in. And then we're going to stir this just until those greens get a little wilted. Spinach is awesome in this too, and I use frozen too if I don't have fresh. I, you know, it's just whatever you have around. As long as you have an onion and some bok choy, garlic, ginger, and you could even use, if you don't have fresh, I guess you could use, you know, garlic, uh, you know, garlic powder or whatever. I, I love garlic and I almost, you know, I pretty much have garlic around all the time. Now I'm going to add in the, that one can of bean sprouts, throw that right in there. And I'm going to take my fork and my thing and break it up. These are also going to shrink down. You could also, if you had fresh, I mean, French, fresh bean sprouts would be great too. Actually, everything's just about ready, but I'm going to turn this down. We don't need this high heat now anymore. Okay, because everything's cooked. I'm going to break up the bean sprouts. There. We don't want to overcook it. I want to still have some crunch to my, and I want the greens to have some nice uh, texture as well. I don't want it to just turn to one big, giant, soft mush. Okay. So I've kind of broken that up. How's my uh, rice coming over here? Ooh, the rice looks great. And if there's just a little bit of juice left in this rice, no biggie because it's it's um, chicken broth. So it's just going to blend right in. So I'm going to go ahead and just add that rice. Uh, I think that's enough. I don't think that I want to use the entire amount of that. So it's like that much rice. Now the last thing is this roux. And it has kind of started to settle to the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and scrape that at Use that fork and scrape all that off the bottom and really give it a nice whip it up. Whip it up, baby. All right, and then into the into the stir fry. Now it's just gonna put. I put it on a real low heat, and it's just gonna. You're gonna wait till this kind of gets uh, thick. It's very watery right now, and you're just gonna have it on this low heat. And I'm actually even gonna throw a cover on it. Well, I don't think I will actually. I want the I want some of that moisture to evaporate. So once this all oh, now it's done. Now all we have to do is when this moisture when this gets it'll be a nice thick uh, coating over all the veggies and um, the chicken meat, and it's very very tasty and delicious. If you wanted to put it over some crunchy chow mein noodles, you can. I don't. I just eat it straight like this. It's it's awesome, fantastic, and delicious. Chicken stir fry. Enjoy.